I didn't know where to begin my search for the flying car. It's gotta be around here somewhere. I guess I'll just start with these, work my way around, walk the beat. Hispano Souza Victoria, town car, model H6A. Nice, but it doesn't fly. See, this car is trying to fly. Look at the emblem. You can do it, buddy. Check it out, Rich. It's like an old Shabaway mirror. It's an old classic wooden boat mirror. I love old garages, man. Garage, well this isn't really a garage, a museum, a warehouse, but this is really cool. I searched and searched and searched to no avail. I couldn't find the flying automobile. Where was it hiding? I had to find it. I would search to the ends of this warehouse. I must find this flying car. Smile, lady. Smile. You're on candid camera. <laughs> it's just something so cool about walking around all this history, because each one of these cars tells a story, you guys. Like, every single one of these cars had a life, had a history, had people that drove it, drove people around in these cars, you know? stories took place. People fell in love in these cars. People got in fights in these cars. People drove to their wife's house from a long trip to say, honey, I'm home. And others just, you know, drove from work and got home from work, you know, and others went on road trips. And But <clears throat> each one of them has a story to tell. And if they could talk, the stories they would tell, they'd probably tell a lot of stories. It's true that these cars would tell many a tale, if given the chance. But the one story I was looking for, this flying automobile, that's the story. They weren't giving up. Look at that, it's an old gauge for the hood ornament. Hello, my good sir. Alfred! Now are we yeah, doing this helpful. lovely day in the museum? It's a fine looking vehicle you have, sir. Let's pull our money together and get one of these things, man. That ain't bad. They got so much stuff. You look over there. It's a train. An entire train. She doesn't look too pleased. This one has air conditioning. A 1905 Franklin Type A runabout. These cars seem to be getting older. Here's an interesting bit of history. In 1893, Charles Herman Metz organized the Waltham Manufacturing Company for the production of Orient Bicycles. And actually, Metz is credited with being the first to put a motor on a bicycle, thus creating the very first motorcycle in 1898. Metz also had something called the Metz Plan, by which a person could assemble his own car and save money. The plan consisted of 14 packages of parts at $25 each to make one car. This pay-as-you-build program was a great success and it allowed Metz to get out of debt. That's an interesting bit of history there for us, but it still doesn't give us the location of this so-called flying car.
She's never seen a flying car in her life. Have you seen a flying car, sir? Has this guy seen a flying car? He looks like a deer in the headlights. No, he's never seen a flying car. Here's a good possible contender for a flying car. Look, look, look. He even says back, future, cool. 82, that's three years before the first movie came out. <clears throat> Look at that. Old gas car. <laughs> Check this out, guys. It's an old mail car. See? It's an old US mail car. You know how I know it's a mail car? Because of the little balls. Because of the little balls. <laughs> Don't get kicked out. I'm intrigued by this vehicle of transportation. It is a tractor, folks. Apparently it was used to make roads and stuff. Back in like the 1800s. Steam power road maker. It's insane. Check it out. I just went and got up all in this vehicle. Luxury. Well, it looks like in the early 80s, a uh, car company at uh, H&M, I think car company in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, made these cars. They get 40 to 70 miles per gallon, but they went bankrupt. They're really small, but they still don't fly. This bad boy's got like a jet engine on the side, but still, did it fly? I don't think it flew. Pretty sure it didn't. We're feeling very good about ourselves. Yes, we are. You look lovely, my dear. Lovely. Here's a fun thing you could do, folks. See this bike here? You could dress up as a sad clown and ride a tandem bike all by yourself and ride through the town dressed as a sad clown. If you do that, film it, post it, and I'll share it. Yeah, it's going with the old intimidating stance. And this guy is, uh, he seems to be a bit frightened by, <laughs> a bit frightened by, this guy here, he's like, help me. This guy is trying to steal my mustache. He's like, give me your mustache, sir. Oh my gosh, you guys. They have an entire collection of old school Indian motorcycles. Look at this. Look at this. Not just one old Indian, but two. Not just two, but three. Not just three, but more. We got an old Indian sidecar, man. Indian sidecar. It's amazing. Look at these old Indians. Look at that. Look at the emblem on this one. That is cool. His nose is missing, unfortunately. This whole row right here. All Indian bikes all the way down to there. That's pretty sweet. What is that? What kind of crazy? That's like some Doc Brown kind of vehicle right there, man. That is Doc Brown in the house. Here's another sidecar. <clears throat> Gotta love the sidecars. You got to. Fun to stay with the YMCA. A lot of people don't know this, but Denver used to be, just like San Francisco, have a bunch of trolley cars you could hop on, hop off. They went all around the city from downtown Denver. Not anymore, because the tire companies got rid of them all. At least that's what I heard. Woo! Because they wanted to sell more tires and cars. Nobody's buying the cars so they get around so good. They got rid of the trolleys. Kind of sad. Yeah, my face is fat. Old Denver trolley car. 
Yep. Denver used to have trolleys. 15th Street. Look at that. That's awesome. It's got kind of a crazy look in his eye, man. I hope he came to work normal today. Here's another one. Old trolley. Towards Berkeley. Hmm. I've seen a lot of cool things, but still no flying car. I wonder if I'll have any luck in the train section. It's worth a look. Pretty narrow gauge. What'd you guys see? I can't see what I'm filming in there. I'm just sticking my camera in the window. Dudes, I just about gave myself a heart attack. Cause see, I was like, oh, I'm gonna step on those and I'm gonna get a good look inside here. And as I did, guess what I saw? As I was peeking up over here, I was like, hello. It just kind of freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> it's like, hurry, hurry. Scary stuff. I was amazed to find an original 4000 class actual coal fired steam locomotive. These were the biggest built and only eight of them remain today. This particular one was involved in a horrendous crash in 1953 and three crew lost their lives. Up close, it was one of the most impressive man-made objects I think I've ever seen. Six feet. I'm six feet tall. These wheels are like, come up to here on me. These wheels, I'm six foot. That, and they're all metal. Dude, look at that. It's insane. Biggest steam powered engine in the world. Look at this thing. I mean, I can't even, this, this whole thing. That's where the locomotive sits. This whole thing is one big old steam engine. All the way up to there. It's like two stories tall and like a billion yards long. This is insane. Look at this thing. The big boy. And that's the entire thing all the way around it. It's big. All right. Here we can go up, go up in it. Sweet. Only had to learn how to control a few gauges. Just a few, nothing too major. You notice those gauges are in the flying V formation, giving it extra strength. Another big old steam engine over here. Gosh, this museum is so cool. There's so much stuff in this museum. Oh my goodness. Where they put all the coal. Look at all these old wagons, man. 
peanut popcorn wagon. As I wandered around this part of the museum, I couldn't help but wonder if transportation's come this far in just over a hundred years. Maybe flying cars really do exist. Look at this. Transportation's come a long way, my friends. But we still don't have flying cars. Well, now there's an airplane, but we need to turn a car into an airplane or an airplane into a car. This is cool, guys. This is a 1923 Kissel uh, Speedster. This was owned by the one and only Amelia Earhart. Uh, she supposedly drove this clear across the, around the country into a bunch of parks and stuff way back in the day in the 1920s. Uh, she drove it from California all the way up to um, Boston. And uh, crazy, this car right here, Amelia Earhart drove it across country as a road trip in this car right here. Imagine doing that, you guys. So cool, so cool. Imagine Amelia Earhart driving around the country in this very vehicle. Hands on that wheel, taking in the sights and sounds of the entire country. I'd seen almost every car this warehouse had to offer. I had to be getting close by now. Look at this, they had a windshield in the back seat. Old school bus. Imagine going to school in that. Always yellow and black though. Here's a 1963 Amphibicar. It went in land and water. I should say it went on land and went in water, but still didn't fly. This is cool, check this out. Amphicar, the A is for awesome. The bottom part, so you can just go underwater. It's all closed off and sealed up. So cool. Life jackets in the car. Here's the engine in the back. Keep it dry. <clears throat> but also, if you're in the water, you gotta keep the front end up so it doesn't sink. Makes sense to me. Look at this thing. <clears throat> Amphibicar. Why don't they have more of these? You know what? I'd be happy with just these. Cars don't have to fly, but at least we should make them go in water. This is what they smashed the cars into. Can you believe that? Whole car smashed into that. Crazy. That's not street legal. Staring down the barrel. I was about to pack up this investigation and take it elsewhere. Maybe put it in the back of this hearst here. Call it a day. And then, out of the blue, a flying car. Take it away, Matt. I bring you the flying car.
Now this is what we're talking about, folks. This experimental car right here is the kind of ingenuity, the kind of creativity, the kind of out-of-the-box thinking we need to make cars fly. This person did this in 1958, who was thinking like this, 1958 built a car that could actually fly 30 to 40 feet up in the air. It was only allowed to do it on air, <clears throat> airplane uh, roads, otherwise known as landing strips, whatever you want to call them. Um, but also went in water. It drove on land, it flew 30 to 40 feet in the air, and it went on water. It wasn't very good as a boat, they said, but man, that's awesome. They didn't get the funds to, um, they never got the funds to actually do it again to make another model, but why not? Come on, folks, this is what we need to be thinking about. This kind of thing right here. Let's do this. It's 2015, folks. We have to do this. Look at that. Oh, this guy was thinking outside the box. Well, folks, I hope you had fun on this episode of Matt's Rad Show. Be thinking about this, guys. Experimental aircraft, water, land, and air. We gotta do this, you guys. It's 2015, we got nine months. October 21st, 19, I mean, October 21st, 2015. We gotta do this, we gotta do this. We can get it done, we can get it done. All right, guys, that's all for this episode of Matt's Rad Show. Okay, bye. We got two minutes, Marty! We got two minutes to slice! If you want to know where the Forney Museum is, there's the Denver Coliseum. And there's the museum. Museum? Coliseum? Museum? Coliseum? Museum? Coliseum? Museum? Coliseum? Museum? Coliseum? I call them as I see them in the museum. Cause my name is Matt from that retro. What was that about? Why aren't you flying? Cars need to fly! You're supposed to fly, it's 2015! So many crickets. That's why we need flying cars! So we don't get stuck in traffic, you guys! Come on! We need to build flying cars! <laughs> what voice am I doing? It sounds like Nemo's flying out to sea! Or swimming out to sea! <laughs> Invent flying cars, folks. Okay, bye.